Hey everybody, this is Matt with Technoax Royalty Free Music. How is everybody doing? Happy New Year. It is 2021. 2020 is over. I, I hope everybody is just as glad as I am. And the new year is here. Let's hope 2021 is a little bit more boring than the last year, hey? In any case, a couple of weeks ago, I asked you to ask me questions for an end of year Q&A, and you guys did that, so I'm going to do that right here. Thank you all for who submitted these questions. I'm going to get right to it, and uh, hopefully this is a good thing for you guys. My Patreon supporter, Pyro Jason, asks, Hey, Technoax, what is your best suggestion to stay motivated to work on music? That is an interesting question, actually, because I don't really usually put into words what inspires me. It's a lot of it is motivation within myself. But I can say that I do like having to uh, have produced things that I actually like like the pe the pieces of music that I post I actually like it a lot of it I do actually listen to it from time to time and uh, I, I can say that I'm kind of proud of some of the stuff that I've produced especially over this last year and sometimes that doesn't necessarily translate over to royalty free music there is a certain complexity to the stuff that I do. And every year I realize this too, is that maybe I should simplify things down so you have things that you can use that are better for basically, you know, background music and stuff like that. But then there's also another part of me that just likes to produce stuff that I think is good, uh, that I think would be interesting, not necessarily disposable. So uh, there's a certain pride that I take into music production and um if you're into that i would say when you do produce music you know go for what sounds good to you what you think is going to make you happy but also i keep coming back to the variety of music there's a certain openness that i come to each track where i intend on making a specific type of track but then sometimes things can veer off into weird and interesting directions and that keeps things new and fresh and makes it easy to not be bored and to just do not be churning out the same thing over and over again. So say you're a fan of heavy metal music, and I certainly am, but over the two, last two decades, certainly there have been people who have infused the genre with different types of influences, like rap, rock, and also doing things with a middle eastern flair to it and just basically different angles different like influences that you can infuse to that genre of music to keep things new and interesting and that doesn't mean you can't go back to the basics and just do heavy metal i'm just saying that you do have the options of mixing up things a little bit just so things don't go stale if you like do things over and over again patreon supporter kyle tunicliffe asks what do you actually listen to when you're not producing? Your genres are quite varied when making music. Are your tastes similar to when listening? And I would say yes, I do normally listen to a lot of different influences. Uh, funnily enough, one of the original inspirations for making music for YouTube came when I was actually playing some video games and video game soundtracks came into my forefront. A lot of video game soundtracks back in the day actually were a lot better than even movie soundtracks. I would listen to things like the Fable 2 soundtrack. That's one of the things that I come back to over and over again, especially when I do like harp music that's basically taking directly some influence from that Fable 2 soundtrack and even the first one too. The Age of Conan soundtrack is always a favorite of mine, even though I've never actually played the game. The soundtrack is magnificent and it's kind of a masterpiece. And I also try to come back to that over and over again. I have a bit of a taste for old time music, uh, like 30s swing also. I like uh, Count Basie, Duke Ellington, uh, a lot of the old things, and especially the people that I kind of used for inspiration a couple years ago for the electro swing music. That stuff is always like cheerful and like, you know, very, very danceable. 
70s rock, Led Zeppelin, you know, The Doors, a lot of things that we actually listened to back in the 90s uh, when um, even like I listened to like Soundgarden and Nirvana and Alice in Chains back in the day when I was a kid. But then even then, a lot of the stuff that came out, there was also the phenomenon back then where we didn't like a lot of the, the pop music coming out. So we went back to the 70s and we found a lot of things like Three Doors Down and just like really classic rock that actually stuck with us. Soundgarden continues to be one of my favorite bands of all time. One of the bands that basically pushed the envelope in terms of composition. They used a lot of like weird time signatures and they did it in such a way that was really indicative of like 90s grunge back in the day. And uh, speaking of weird time signatures, Tool. Tool is one of my favorite bands of all time as well. Weirdly enough for like this genre or this generation of music, I tend to go for the people who have not been signed. Popaloos Music is one of my favorite producers on YouTube and there have been like a smorgasbord of different and weird different uh, producers that have these one-off songs that like latch on to me for whatever reason just because they push the grade on what music is. Patreon supporter Gixer Kim asks, how do you get the resources to travel to these great places I see you pictured on Instagram? So first of all, I do have an Instagram. It is the same name as my channel, Technoax. And for the last year, I've actually posted uh, quite a few hiking pictures there of me in various locations. 2020 has been extremely exciting due to the non-stop lockdowns, especially earlier in the year. The focus on that specific Instagram has actually changed a little bit. I've done a little bit of sketching, but let's address the, the question here. Uh, the secret is that those locations that you're seeing on Instagram is actually kind of in my backyard. I live in the Pacific Northwest where you've got the ocean on the west, Great Plains on the east, and in between there's a gigantic mountain range. It's not really hard to find like hiking locations around here to spend the time when you're extremely bored and there's nothing to do because all your restaurants are closed and your gyms are closed and all your favorite bars are closed and all of the things that you usually enjoy are closed. What is left to do? You can hike and you can enjoy the very beautiful nature around you and, and that's what I'm doing. I've actually done quite a bit of hiking and this is like the perfect place to do so. Jack Griffin asks, how do you come up with the inspiration for all the songs that you'd come out with? Do you plan or do you just roll with whatever is in your head? It's a mixture of both. Definitely a lot of times I start a track, I have a general idea of what I want to do, maybe a genre that I want to do because maybe at some specific time I haven't done something in a while and I figure that I should do it, right? Let's say I haven't had a dubstep track in a while, well let's try to make a dubstep track, but that's about as far as I plan it. A lot of times I'll just play around with like synthesizers in a blank setting, you know, an initialized setting, and they'll play around with like different waveforms and filter settings to make a new and interesting sound. And a lot of times, some of my best songs actually start out as one interesting setting that I have basically constructed on a synthesizer or maybe a riff on a guitar or something like that. As a matter of fact, uh, the running subseries that I've had for a couple years now called Until Your Engine Stops basically started with a really cool guitar riff that I, I, I synced up to a basically a basic techno beat. And the whole theme behind the Until Your Engine Stops subseries has basically been this really weird eclectic mix between heavy metal and other genres and not necessarily techno, but a lot of the songs there t start out with with a basic four on the floor beat. And then it will evolve into this really crazy drum pattern at the end, coupled with really crazy guitars. And it's something that I want to expand on in the future. I don't know how I'm gonna do it but I'm definitely willing to push that concept further. That whole sub-series basically started with something that I did on the fly. I didn't even really plan on the sub-series even existing. But there it is. Uh, I, I guess my advice right there is just be open to crawling into whatever rabbit hole that you find yourself in and explore it as, as much as you possibly can. Gerbang Istana asks, Hi sir, can you give me a recommendation for a sad soundscape background? No copyright. 
I, I do have a soundscape background playlist on my channel. I'll link it in the description below. Uh, I'm not sure about sad, but it is definitely very wistful and very relaxed. In terms of sadness, I would recommend anything that has maybe kind of like it operates under the minor scales. That definitely is a much sadder or much more downturned type of music than something that is based on the major scale. Stacy Bluebird asks, how's your day and was the year good for you? I think I can speak for a lot of people just to say that I'm, I'm glad that 2020 was over. On a personal level, it was kind of a hard year for me because there were things going on where I couldn't do things that I normally could do, obviously for obvious reasons. And I won't get into the politics for that, but it was definitely a, a stressful year for me in a lot of ways. I think though, in terms of music, and it was actually pretty good on this channel and in general. I would say that I was very prolific in my music production this year as opposed to last year. This year, I, I actually dinged 120 tracks, 120 individual songs that I produced over this last year between January of 2020 and now. And I think actually there's a lot of individual tracks that I'm really proud of, like things that I had never thought of for. Just things that I never thought that I could do. Uh, for instance, my 10 year anniversary song. I never thought that I could do a 12 minute song, but uh, you know, there it is. And I was able to do it in such a way that it wasn't boring and it also wasn't, you know, kind of hokey as well. Granted, the views were not there for the much of the year, but I kind of attribute that to things that YouTube is doing rather than things that I am doing. Obviously, YouTube is in a state of flux right now. Uh, they are kind of in the mode for censorship and moving more towards the mainstream like everything else is at the moment. But I think, I mean, I'm proud of what I've done. And so I'm really happy with the music that I produced this year. Festive Black Starry asks, This is probably too late. Do you want people to credit your name if they use your music? It is not too late because I am answering this question. The answer to that is, I would like you to. I am not the most adept at tracking people down if they don't credit my music. And I don't really have the time to make that kind of effort to track down everybody. So I just don't do it. You'd be surprised at how many things come up and blindside me with, oh, they, they use the music there for that thing. I don't really mind, but it's like a, a polite thing to do to basically, you know, cite me if you use my music. I, I think the biggest thing that always falls me is when people try to put my music in a content ID database and then claim it as their own. And then people start getting claimed and then obviously I have to go to that company and then take some action to prevent them from actually using the music because if you guys are being claimed, then you can't use the music and that's no good for me. I think one of the things that I'm particularly proud of is that I have actually made quite a bit of effort to keep all of my music free for everybody else to use. Legadin asks, well, you have a unique style and unique songs, but which song is you like the most? And the one that cost you the most too? I would say that my favorite song for this year would probably be the Decade of Epicness song, the 12 minutes long song. It actually took quite a bit to try to come up with something that was interesting for 12 minutes. Obviously, it spans a lot of different genres, but it was really cool to see all of that come together. It had kind of a tool atmosphere to it, because obviously when you try to switch from synthwave to heavy metal, you have to do so in such a gradual way to make things uh, more cohesive. And I think I accomplished that quite a bit with the way I mixed in the guitars at the, at the start of that, that midpoint there. But uh, yeah, it was something that I was pretty proud of. Run to Light was actually something that I was actually pretty proud of too, because it mimicked that 70s rock feel, and I've always wanted to do that. And again, it's something that I was meaning to do for years and years and years, and it just actually just, it happened. And I, I'm actually really glad that it happened. Grivok Gaming asks, what's the favorite video you've seen this year featuring your music? If you could collab with any artist, who would it be? 
I think in terms of collaboration, uh, I like to revisit some of the people who I've collabed with like in the past, honestly. There is a YouTuber out there named Charm. She does a lot of World of Warcraft covers, but she's actually lent her voice to my project quite a few times and it, it's been actually spectacular. In the future, maybe one of those times I can actually, you know, collab with her again. I think the problem with collaboration though, especially for this channel, is the nature of what I do. Like, I produce so many tracks, but it's easy to actually get lost in all, all of them. Collaboration doesn't really benefit a lot of other people. It does contribute to the art form for sure, but I'm not sure it really contributes all that much to their exposure. People come here to basically find music to use in their videos, and vocals don't necessarily lend themselves to that kind of thing. As a matter of fact, when I do tracks with vocals, most often I get the request to like strip them out for an instrumental version. And obviously that's not really conducive to what they want in terms of like contributing to people's art. They want to be included in that and not necessarily have the option to opt them out so I you know I totally understand that and maybe one of these days I can have people like that uh, come collaborate again but in terms of vocals I do have options as well voice packs and I also do have the vocaloids for which I've been experimenting around this year as well as far as uh, my favorite video this year that that used my music uh, there's this guy called Ian from the h3h3 podcast that told us to blast off <laughs> <laughs> Ian just switched his background to a spaceship. What? Who's playing yeah. this wow. music? Go ahead, Ian. I'm not gonna interrupt. This is your show now. Oh, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Ian just put on a space helmet. We're blasting off, baby. Whoa. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. Just what go. is oh, going on? Oh. Dude, what? Ian's gotta. Ha I think you need COVID forever, bro. <laughs> I need well, everyone watching to blast the fuck off right now. Okay. <laughs> you feel me? Do you dude, I do, me? I do feel you, dude. <laughs> Alright, those are the questions. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening to the music. Thank you for a very great 2020. And I will see you in 2021, and we will do this all again.